You're listening to the Naptime Empires podcast with my mom, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Mom, your show's on. Thanks, bud. I got it from here. Welcome to the Naptime Empires podcast, refreshingly honest conversations on the realities of parenthood and entrepreneurship. I'm your host, Nikki Ellidge Brown. Let's get started. Oof, the resistance has been real on episode three. This is the last in our premiere series, and I've put so much pressure on it because I'm like, well, it has to symbolize and be like foreshadowing of all the solo episodes to come. And that is bull honky. So I am releasing that expectation and taking the pressure off. And I want to talk about this quote that I heard in a podcast on the way home from the beach today. I actually recorded a totally different episode three this morning, but I wasn't quite feeling like, yeah, that's it. That's the one. Drop the mic. I mean, I don't want to drop my mic because it's nice. It's a blue Yeti in case you're wondering. But I heard this quote and I knew on the way home that tonight after bedtime, see, sometimes it's bedtime empires. I knew that I would need to re-record this for you. And I want to talk a little bit about the martyr and mom guilt and permission to define it all. When people talk about having it all. Because that, honestly, it makes perfect sense this would be the episode that felt most right. Because when I first mentioned Naptime Empires back in April of 2016, and I put out this type form survey on the thank you page, which you can still get to when you go to naptimeempires.com, I have this type form survey. If you go to typeform.com, you can make pretty forms and surveys and that kind of thing. And hundreds of women instantly, like within the first few days, hundreds of women poured out their hearts. If you're one of them, thank you so much because I have read everyone. So again, if you want to, then go on to naptimeempires.com and I'll send you the link for it. But I was asking like, we know how old are your little ones? When is nap time for you? What are your big fears and concerns and struggles with building a nap time empire? What makes it all worth it? What can I create that would be helpful for you? And blah, 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 blah. And my instant gut reaction, the first time I scanned through that spreadsheet, I have it as a Google spreadsheet on my Google Drive. My first reaction, honestly, I'm going to be honest here, and we can discuss, was ladies, we need to lower the freaking bar. That was my first thought. Because I'm like, are you happy with how you show up as a mom, as a wife? Are you happy with how you show up as a partner? And some of them wanted to say, well, I don't really know that anybody wanted to say both. I'm I'm rocking out at all of it. I don't know if anybody said that because that's probably not who I'm attracting because that's not how I feel in my life. But a lot of them in the comments at the end were like, there wasn't an option to say neither, but I'm not happy with how I'm showing up either way with my family life or with my business life. And everyone's kind of seemed to be looking for a magic bullet. Like, please, Nikki, please have an answer of a shortcut of something that you're doing that's making it all like super easy breezy. And so that honestly terrified me for a bit, which may be why I'm not, or I haven't started the podcast right away. It's taken me almost a year to actually start it because I was like, well, poop, I don't have an answer. I do not have a shortcut. I do not feel like it is easy breezy over here, but I do feel like it's worth exploring Because I know I want to be able to create. I know I want to be able to add value to the world. And I know I love my family. And I want to be able to have fun, make memories with them, and help my kiddos grow into lovely human beings. And I know that I want to do both. And I do want to do both right now at this time when they are young. And so the only option is to figure out what I want that to look like and how I can feel good about how I'm showing up as a wife, as a mom, as a business owner, as a friend, as a woman. So that's what I want to explore a little bit in this episode. And I'll get to the quote in just a minute. But honestly, I also want to say just as a disclaimer, which I mean, not everybody's going to be listening to this one episode. But this just think of this as like a naptime empires, the whole parenthood and entrepreneurship thing. Think of that as just like our icebreaker gateway drug of a conversation because we can talk about a lot 
you know, it's just, it's that whole sell them what they want, give them what they need thing. So you're probably building an empire, right? You're building a business with little ones around probably if you're drawn to the name naptime empires, but there's a whole lot more we can talk about than just the mom and the kids stuff and the business stuff. And we will, we will. But today I really do want to talk about that intersection of the two and all the stories that we tell ourselves. Oh my goodness. Cause the other thing I notice when I'm reading through, like again, seriously vulnerable shares, like so beautiful that some have brought tears to my eyes. Cause I'm like, Oh my gosh, you don't even know me and you trust me enough to tell me that. Thank you so much. Like there's just so many lovely, beautiful, raw shares in this spreadsheet. Again, I would love to hear yours if you haven't shared it yet. But one of the other things is that I notice so many blocks and limiting beliefs and just junk stories. And I can notice the ones that I've already worked through and I can recognize the ones that I have not yet worked through. Right. And by blocks and limiting beliefs, I mean like I can't, or I have to do it all myself or, you know, I can't, I can't do it all during nap time. And honey, let me tell you, this is called nap time empires. Cause that was just the divine download that came into my brain and it sounded cute and everybody else likes the name too but I'm not just building my empire during nap time. So please don't get that twisted. I have spent a whole lot more hours than just nap times on my business. And then sometimes I haven't really been working at all. Honestly, lately, 2016, it's shocking to me how much revenue I was still able to generate considering how little work I did. I was like totally phoning it in. We can talk about that another time. But the point is, it's not just during nap time. So if you do feel like you have to do everything you can possibly do in a nap time, which may be 30 minutes in a given day. I mean, hopefully not because babies need more sleep if you do have a baby, but maybe again, your little ones are in school or maybe you homeschool. And I don't know, time-wise, just take that limit off because this conversation applies to like anyone who's actually trying to do this. And who I'm talking to, I'm talking to you knowing that you do need to get support and that you can't only do this. I mean, you can, I don't want to say that actually. Because I do have conversations like Morgan McDonald, who interviewed me in episode one and her episode is coming up. She did legit start her business during nap times and a lot of people do. But for me, I started my business when I was working part time. I already told you that in episode one, I was working part time and Bryson was in daycare two to three days a week in the early days. And I was still working even when he was home. That's the point, right? All I'm saying is I read through and I found a lot of limiting beliefs and stories that we tell ourselves like, oh man, everybody who doesn't have kids can do it faster and it's hard and it's different. And it is, it's of course, it's totally different when you have kids, but like there are a lot of principles that are the same when it comes to building a great business. It doesn't really matter. It's about like when you do have time to work, because even if people don't have kids, they have families or friends, like a social life of some kind or hobbies, or some people are working a nine to five, you know, like they have time constraints. So yes, maybe they can check in and out of a nine to five and you can't check in and out of being a parent, but like everybody has their thing. And even when your kids are gone and at school all day, like there are still the same kind of principles and stories that you can make up and tell yourself. And so I think that's one of the best most valuable things about being in a community of people who can kind of like reflect back to you that that's not necessarily true. That's kind of what I want to do with this podcast is like hold up a mirror and show you like, here's what's possible for you because this is what so-and-so did in this situation. And this is what so-and-so did in this situation. And if she did that, maybe that's going to give you an idea. That's why I talk about it as a potluck, right? Like we're just showing Here's how we're making it work because I just feel like we've got to blow up these excuses before they swallow our dreams whole. You know what I mean? For real. Because we could come up with any excuse that we need to. It's legit. I mean, you could be like, it's just not a good time to build my business. And nobody would fault you for that because it's important. You know, raising good humans is important. But listening to that call of your soul to contribute And to share your gift with the world is also important. And that's what this quote was about, which is what inspired my rant for this podcast. So let me get to that. It was Liz Gilbert's podcast, Magic Lessons. If you haven't read her book, Big Magic, I highly recommend it. And I'll link to it in the show notes at naptimeempires.com. I read her book. Actually, this is another thing that relates to the podcast because I thought, ooh, it'd be fun on the podcast to have like a weekly challenge. And one of the challenges would be to 
go social media app free for a certain set amount of time. So I actually read a hardcover version of Big Magic sometime last year in 2016 when I was going social media free for a weekend and it was glorious. And so I loved the book years and years ago. I read Eat, Pray, Love, I think while we were doing island hops around Hawaii. Anyway, so we went to the beach today. I recorded this first version of episode three. It was like totally different topic. Didn't feel great about it. But on the way home from the beach today, which was lovely, salt water is the cure for everything, as the quote says. The beach was lovely. And on the way home, it was like a 45 minute drive, which is long. I mean, that's big for Oahu. That's like it's on the other side of the island. And just for reference, on our way there, Bryson, my five year old, we were 26 minutes into the car ride. And he's like, we've been in the car for hours. And I was like, dude, you don't even know. I was like, actually, it's been less than half an hour because I'm that mom. (laughs) That'll correct him. Anyway, on the way home, it was a long air quote commute, 45 minutes. And I wanted to listen to a podcast because obviously I have podcasts on the brain and I didn't want to listen to like a businessy podcast. I wanted to listen to, you know, a different podcast, creative. And when I think creative, I think of Liz Gilbert. So I went and found episode one. Loved the format, by the way, of at least the ones that I listened to. It was like a short call with someone in her community, and then she would do a follow-up call with one of her friends to help support that person in the community. And I'm very open to doing something like that with this podcast, by the way, so be sure to let me know in the playground in our Facebook group discussion if you think that would be fun. So anyway, the quote that she read in episode one, Liz Gilbert, Magic Lessons, was from English author A.S. Byatt from an article, which I'm reading when I Googled it. It's on theguardian.com from 2009, April 25th. And what this author says is, I think of writing simply in terms of pleasure. It's the most important thing in my life, making things. Much as I love my husband and my children, I love them only because I'm the person who makes these things. And then the author says, I ask her to elaborate. I, she says, who I am, is the person that has the project of making a thing. And because that person does that all the time, that person is able to love all these people. And so when Liz Gilbert was quoting A.S. Byatt, I thought, ooh, yeah, right. Because it's so easy for us to be like, I'm a bad mom. If I want to be working, I'm a bad mom. If I'd rather be doing this in any given moment than, you know, playing with my toddler, reading this book for the 10th time, I'm a bad mom. We have so many judgments. I have a Facebook Live. I'll link to this too in the show notes as well. A Facebook Live on a day when I totally felt like a horrible mom. And spoiler alert, at the end of the day, Bryson was like, you're the bestest mom ever. I'm paraphrasing, but I'm pretty sure that's what he said. And it was really sweet. And I was like, oh my gosh, I'm over here being such a bee to myself and thinking like, because I ignored you for most of the day. (laughs) I knew you were healthy and fine. And Deacon was like a newborn or something and Jeremy was gone. So I'm solo parenting newborn and four-year-old. And I felt like a horrible mom for neglecting them. I don't remember what I was working on. Anyway, but I just had major mom guilt. And when he said that, I was like, right, I am definitely my own toughest critic. I mean, don't get me wrong. Sometimes he says I'm a bad mom and a mean mom too, but that's just because he's been upset with me. Anyway, the point is you have permission to create your thing. And what I really loved with her, she followed up, Liz actually said this and it was so, so good. And I'm going to make it like a picture quote or an image that we can share all over the internet. Liz Gilbert said, if you model martyrdom to them, they will grow up to be martyrs. If you model creativity to them, they will grow up to be creators. So basically, she says, it's a public service for you to honor your creativity. Boom! How about a hall pass? How about we take that as a hall pass? Now again, there are lots of layers to this, and what if your work isn't your creativity, and you're not honoring your creativity, but it's just something that pays the bills right now? Well, again, there's a lot of honor in that, and again, I do recommend that you check out Big Magic because she talks specifically to people who have like full-time jobs. It's not like everybody just has all this spare time to create. Like Everything that's ever been created, those people who created had life going on too. It's kind of the point. So does that resonate with you? 
Really? Because, you know that analogy that everybody rolls their eyes because they use it so often when they say, why do you think it's, you know, when you're on an airplane, they tell you to put your oxygen mask on first before assisting those around you. You know, like you're no good to anybody if you pass out because you don't have enough oxygen. And I know that it's easy to say that, but I'm going to say it. I'm saying it because I need you to repeat it back to me too, because I forget it and feel guilty too. Although I have to say, I'm not actually as martyry as I imagined that I would be. Like as a mom, I'm really pretty clear on like, no, actually I do. I need, I need to go for a walk or I do need to have this quiet time. I can't always do that. But like, honestly, sometimes as soon as my husband's home, I'm like, all right, guys, I'm going for a walk, you know, cause you just need that space and that's okay. Cause you're human. You're human. Another thing that Liz said in the podcast, mothers are the members of society who need to be given the most permission to be able to do the things that ignite their own souls. Because there is some deep sense in the world that once you are a mother, your lives belong exclusively entirely and only to your children, even if they're in school. There's this deep sense that anything you do that ignites you harms them. This also makes me remember how when the movie Bad Moms came out, I was like, oh yeah, here we go. It's a movement and everybody wants to acknowledge. And like the hilarious ladies at I Mom So Hard and the cat in that show, I believe it is, the ones, the moms who are in Toronto and they have the mom truth videos, they're hilarious. Why do you think there's a movement for this? Because it's about honesty. It's about like, oh, right. Okay. I'm not the only one feeling pressure about this and it's taboo in a way because we don't want anyone to think for a second that because we're admitting that we're not like 100% mom mode all the time implies somehow that we don't love our children completely. I mean, let's just agree that is the off the table. Like we absolutely love our children. We are super thankful that we get to have them in our lives. That's absolute foundational tenet of Naptime Empires is that we're happy to have kids. It's just that we're also happy to have businesses. We're happy to have projects and passions and work. And that's why we're willing to go through the struggle and the confusion and the like WTF am I doing to be able to have both. And so that just brings me back to the whole topic of defining it all, having it all, blah, blah, blah. And the thing is, we've got the resources we've got. I'll link also to a video of a conversation I had with Todd Herman last year, or maybe it was two. Yeah, it was because Deacon was around. So it had to have been probably June, 2016, but it's like, you've got to just know these are your constraints. This is what you have. If right now this is your situation and you have this many hours to do your work or you have this much support right now, like, okay, cool. That's what it is. These are decisions that we're making. So that's the other thing that I wanted to just remind you that you have power and choices and decisions that you can make given what you've got right now. So I know this is a bit of a ramble, but again, I just want to talk to you like you're sitting here in my closet with me. And by talking to you, honestly, it's like I'm talking to myself too. Well, I am. Let's be honest. I am literally talking to myself right now in my closet, but you know what I'm saying? What I'm sharing with you is something I definitely need to listen back to. Because mom guilt is the easy default. It's like in vogue to be like, oh, I feel so guilty. Oh, I'm so busy. Kind of like when people say I'm so busy. And it's like, that's not cool. Like you're in charge of your calendar, right? Like you can be in charge of your life. So even if it's busy and instead of saying busy, you say full. There's a quote or a viral article I saw on Facebook about that the other day or year, month, whatever. But just being mindful of the stories that we tell ourselves, dude, that's basically the point. That's what I want to talk about today for now is just think about the stories that you're telling yourself, that it has to be hard, that it has to look a certain way, that if you are spending time on your business or writing your book or creating your podcast, that you're a bad mom. F that. It's not true. Because as Liz Gilbert said, by modeling creativity to them, they will show up to be creators. If you end up making all these sacrifices of like, no, I'll just, I'll do that later. And whether you mean like later tonight, it's after midnight and you really need to go to sleep or whether you mean later, like when they're off in school or maybe when they're off in college and you're postponing your dreams, mama, 
then that's what you're teaching them to do the same thing. And that sucks. You do not want them to do that. You want them to go after what they love. You want them to spend as much time as possible doing what they love. And then, of course, sharing that with people that they love. So it's whatever it all is to you. You've got to define it. And only you will know what's right. And then once you figure out what's right, honestly, somebody's going to be getting a tooth or somebody may catch a cold and then everything's going to shift. And just like if you have a little card table with the house of cards, like somebody's just going to like knock right into it and then it all falls apart. And then you pick up the pieces and figure it out for that next season because it's always going to change. And even if nothing changes, you will by doing the work that you're doing in your business or on yourself you're going to change. Things are going to change. You're going to want things to change. And good heavens, we know that these kiddos change. Another thing I really want to go on the record as saying in this first batch of episodes is something that totally made me cry earlier, again, 2016 sometime. I guess this time, it was like literally a year ago, and we were at Alani, my favorite place, the Disney Resort out here on Oahu. And we were at a character breakfast with Mickey and Minnie and pals. Bryson was four, Deacon was a newborn, and we were there with my parents. And we were thinking forward to our Disney trip, which we just took over Thanksgiving 2016. And, I mean, don't get me wrong, I made an A in calculus in high school. But for some reason, when I was doing the math to figure out that Bryson was going to be five by the time we went to Disney World, it just really threw me for a loop. Like, I know that five comes after four, but it just really hit me that my baby was going to be five. He was going to be five. Like to me, this next level, you know, next thing you go to another hand. And I just started to cry. So of course it was postpartum hormones too, but it just really hit me. And then I started to think of how much of his life I've spent with my nose in my laptop, you know? So here's the other side of mom guilt. Like sometimes if you feel bad, it's because you're not in alignment. I think probably all the time, if you're feeling bad, you're not in alignment with how you really want to be living. And I'm going to be totally honest with you. That's the point of this podcast. I spent a lot of, wasted a lot of time. So it's not like all the minutes that I've been spending on my computer, I've really been getting it done. And, you know, I have friends on this podcast in future episodes who will say that pregnancy and parenthood has made them like efficient goddesses. That's not me. I've wasted a lot of time. I am not going to lie. And I struggle with that because as frustrated as you may get, As slow or fast as your business may grow, your kids are always going to grow faster. Does that make sense? Like you may get frustrated and think, oh man, I want to be this place in my business three years from now. But then if I think about that, I'm like, oh my gosh, well then Bryson's going to be eight three years from now. You know what I mean? So when you're looking at your business trajectory, you may get impatient with that growth. But then when you look at pictures of your kiddo like a year ago, You can't even believe how fast they're growing. And that's always going to be the case. So that's the other side of the mom guilt piece. And that's the other side of this conversation is like, we also have to check ourselves before we wreck ourselves to when we get so swirled up and carried away in the business that we're missing out on these years. And again, that's the tension and the intersection that I want to be able to touch on and explore in this conversation with you, because I used to say, I've said this, I think on other people's podcasts, but at least Bryson had 18 months before I started my business. Whereas Deacon was practically born on a live webinar. (laughs) Like I was literally doing webinars at 37, 38 weeks pregnant. And then I think I had my first like live, it was like a bonus call when he was about two months old, but still like when Deacon was born, I was crying and I just felt like, okay, now I have a second chance to reboot. This is a milestone and a turning point and an opportunity for me to just take a second. And by take a second, I guess it really was a year. <laughs> it was basically all of 2016 to shake things up and to let them settle and to just think about how do I want to move forward? What do I want this to look like? How do I want to build my naptime empire? You know, I feel like it's been a good warm up and now it's really time. And that's just what I want to encourage you to think about through this conversation is how do you want it to look? How do you want to feel about how you're showing up for your kids, for your husband or partner or friends, employees, if you're single mom, you know, God bless you because 
solo momming while my husband's been gone for 75% plus of the last few years. Even though my kids are pretty chill, I just, I have so much respect for you. Anyway, just think about like, how do you want to feel? How do you want to feel about how you show up in your business? I know I don't want to feel like I have felt about how I show up in my business, which is like playing at 10%. I feel like I have not been there. Surely there are times when I'm like all in focused when I'm working, but then there's just been so much time where I'm just like, you know, not into it. But again, that's usually a sign that you're out of alignment, that you need to be working on something different, which is why I'm very happy to be working on this project with you, this podcast. So that's that. I mean, thank you, Liz Gilbert, for inspiring this conversation. I hope it's been helpful for you, but it's definitely been worthwhile to me because I do selfishly feel and I am going to try to own it and be a little more selfish this year as opposed to just silencing myself for fear of appearing that way because either way then you're still being selfish because you're just being afraid of judgment so staying quiet but I do feel like this is the heart of the conversation and years ago I wrote a blog post for moms in business and what I came up with was some days will work too much Some days we'll play too much, but as long as our work too much days pave the way for more play too much days, I think we're headed in the right direction. And that's still how I feel. I think that, I mean, if you're listening right now, you're probably like me in the fact that everything that you're doing now, it's because it's satisfying to you. Like it's a need. It's something that you want to do to do your business, whatever it is, but also you're thinking about the future that it can create for your family. So it's kind of just that catch 22 because it's like, well, I'm doing this for us people, you know, I'm doing this so we can go to Disney world, but it's like, well, life is happening now every day. Every moment is precious. You never know what's going to happen. So at the same time, it's like, okay, do you need to close the laptop, step away and go to the park? Do you need to go to the beach instead of just trying to grind out that one more episode? Yes. I'm very thankful that I did just stop and then go to the beach today. You know, it's just that it's, that dance. So figure it out. That's my challenge to you. That's my challenge to you, my homework. I mean, that's like life, right? Like I said, it's going to change whatever you decide, however you define it all and however you decide how you want to feel today. It may change next week, next month, next year, surely. But for now, I just invite you to pause and take some time to yourself. Take long enough to really just write it out like on paper. Here's how I want to feel when I'm with my kids. Here's how I want to feel when I'm working, you know, which is like focused, knowing that I'm working on the most important stuff. Here's how I want to feel in my relationship. And then let's start doing it. Let's start making it happen. Like let's define it. And it's going to look different for everybody. Like I said, it may look different for us today than it does tomorrow. It's going to look different. But if we don't actually stop and take the time to define what we want our naptime empire to feel like, It's never going to come to fruition. That's my message for you today. So I'm here for you. I'm super excited to explore more of this with you. I can't wait to discuss it with you in the group, which you'll hear in the outro, you know, in just a few seconds. In the meantime, take care of you and those little creators that you're responsible for and that gift that you're sharing with the world. Thank you for that. Thank you for taking time for you because believe it or not, We all, and I mean literally the whole world, benefits when you take care of you. Talk to you next time. This show may be over, but the conversation is just beginning. Head on over to naptimeempires.com slash Facebook so you can join my free... Wait, did I say free? I'm in priceless, rapidly growing community of Naptime Empire Builders for deeper discussions, behind the scenes scoop, and of course, updates whenever I've got new stuff coming up for you. NaptimeEmpires.com slash Facebook. See you there. See you next time. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 